Remember when replacing a battery involved a couple of bolts and resetting the clock? Well, those days are long gone. Hey everybody, it's Charles. In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to replace the vehicle battery, how to code it after replacement, and what to do about all those pesky lights that come on every time you disconnect a battery. In this video, I'm gonna be using my 2019 Golf R, but this is going to apply for almost all modern Volkswagens and Audis, including Mark 8s. And later on, we'll talk about what happens if you don't do the battery adaptation. We're only gonna need a couple of things to do this job. A 13 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, a ratchet, an extension. I'm gonna show you how to do this with VCDS or OBD11. And of course, we need a vehicle battery. Getting one color coded to your car is gonna be optional. But give it up to Optima for having the fastest color batteries. To save yourself some work afterwards, you can roll the windows up but it's not necessary, but I'll show you how to reset pinch protection in case you left them down. First up, make sure you turn the vehicle off. Then we're going under the hood and stage five homemade hood light is optional. The battery placement is gonna be a little bit different depending on the car. I also have an aftermarket intake, so yours might look a little different. First thing we wanna do is disconnect the negative battery terminal. That's gonna be this one here at the back. There's a negative terminal symbol. You can see it right there. If you do the positive terminal first, the one towards the front, you run the risk of possibly arcing out on the ECM, which is right here, and it will for sure let all the smoke out of the ECM. And you don't wanna do that because that will make for a very bad, sad day. Also, when when you're loosening this, make sure you don't have an extension that's the length where you run the risk of touching the positive terminal either. We'll take our 10 millimeter socket. That nut is captive, so you don't need to undo it a ton. I also like to unplug our little battery module here. You can tuck this out of the way, take our cover off. Now we can undo our positive terminal. My terminal is pretty loose. If you find that the terminal's not loose, take a flat blade screwdriver and just rock the terminal open a little bit, and then it should slide right off. With the battery undone and the cables out of the way, it's time to unbolt our battery from its hold down. This can also look different depending on the car you're working on. Mine's 113 at the bottom front. The Mark 8, for example, has a band that runs across the top in addition to another hold down. With your hold down loose, you might need to pull the little blanket up a little bit, remove the hold down. Now carefully take your battery out. These can be kind of heavy, so make sure you're careful. All right. Here we go, here's our old battery, here's our new one. There's not a whole lot to really explain here. We are going to take our blanket. Let me turn this the same way. If we can get our blanket right. We're gonna take our blanket off. Feel free to clean it if you'd like. We're gonna put our blanket on our new one. Now there is some information on the tops of the batteries that we're gonna need in a little bit. You'll notice there's a bunch of dirt and debris down in our tray. This is a good opportunity to vacuum or blow all that junk out of there. A quick note when you're installing the battery, there's going to be some kind of channel or groove that actually will help hold the battery in place. This corresponds to this part on the battery here, so make sure that your battery is seated underneath the ridge on the back, otherwise you're not properly installing the battery. And that actually can become a safety thing, so make sure you get it all the way under there. We'll grab our new one, line it up, and install it. Next, we'll put our hold down bracket back in. For this one, you need to install the front first and then drop it into place. It also needs to be in a little groove right here in the tray. Tighten down that 13. Then I'll usually give the battery a wiggle and make sure that it's locked down properly. We can take our terminal covers off. Your battery may not have those. Make sure the blanket's down all the way. Positive terminal on first. Make sure it's fully seated down as far as it'll go. If it won't go down all the way, make sure your nut is loose. Grab a flat blade and just wiggle it down. This doesn't generally take very much force to get it down all the way. Tighten that one up. Also of note, on the positive terminal, there's this little red removable cap. Sometimes there's a hose that comes off this battery, especially batteries that are inside the car. We wanna try and get it as close to the way it was from the factory as possible. Once the positive terminal is on, we can go ahead and put our negative terminal on. Make sure this is square and down all the way. We'll go ahead and snug this down. Plug in your battery module connector here. Make sure that the little tab is latched. You'll hear it click. Now I'm not generally one to say you gotta put a torque wrench on everything that you tighten, but this is a place where it's actually not a bad idea. The torque spec for both of these 10 millimeter nuts is six Newton meters, which is about 53 inch pounds. Do not tighten this to 53 pound feet of torque or you will have a very bad day. For the cover on our positive terminal, I'm just gonna trim this just a little bit so it fits a little bit better. 
probably not necessary, but it makes me happy. Now we're pretty much done under the hood minus one thing. There's some information on the top of the battery. Not a bad idea to snap a picture of. So we have it for when we do our battery adaptation. For the adaptation part, I'm gonna take my light off and shut the hood. Next, we're gonna plug in our OBD2 connector, whether we're using BCDS or OBD11, but it's exactly the same either way, and there's probably other scan tools that'll do it too. Then we're gonna turn our ignition on and notice a plethora of warning lights and all kinds of crazy things going on. Don't worry about any of that for right now. We'll solve that problem in a second. So we got our OBD11 here. I also really like to have everything turned off in the car the climate control, the heated seats, I have the DRLs turned off. So once you have your OBD11 main screen up, instead of tapping the tap to scan in the center, we're gonna tap this thing that sort of like a square settings button. I don't know what the heck that, that's supposed to be, but we're gonna tap that. You're gonna see we're gonna have faults in so many modules. Don't worry about that right now. So you can either scroll or go to ID number, and we're looking for address word 19, which is gonna be gateway, select that. We're gonna go into adaptation. We're gonna go into battery adaptation. You can see now we have a list of things that we're able to program. This is where that information you snapped a picture of off the battery is going to come in handy. So in our case, our rated battery capacity from the factory was 69 amp hours, but our new battery is 72 amp hours. So we're gonna enter 72. Now, this Optima is made by Clarios, which is not on the vendor list. So we're gonna type UNK for unknown, hit done. Our battery serial number. If you're using a factory battery, it'll have a serial number right on it. Mine's right near that QR code that you're going to enter. It's gonna be a 10 digit code. Mine is listed as all ones. I've heard of a lot of people putting the date that you replace the battery in here as well. So we're gonna do all ones except the last one, we're gonna make a two. And then for the battery technology, this is gonna depend on what kind of battery you have as well. Our factory battery was an EFB, and we're going back with an AGM battery, absorbed glass mat battery. Then we have to slide to right. Our adaptation was accepted, shrank that little window down, and that's it. Now from here, if you wanna blow all these faults out, that's totally fine, I'm not going to do that. Our next step is going to be important. We need to go shut the car off, close all the doors, and lock it, and let it sit for a couple of minutes. I couldn't really find a good answer as to why locking the car down till it goes to sleep was an important part of the process, but it's called out, so it's worth a couple of minutes of just locking the car and letting it sit. Once your car is set for a couple of minutes, go ahead and unlock it, get on in, take your OBD2 connector out so you don't end up forgetting it, turn our ignition on, Notice we still got things flashing through, giving us warnings, flashing tire pressure light, hill assist, our traction control lights on, front assist not available, all these warning lights. This is normal every time you disconnect the battery. But you will notice that our clock has reset to the proper time. We need to make sure we have good ventilation, so if your garage door's closed, go ahead and open it. Start your car up, turn the wheel all the way left, turn the wheel all the way right, and now you'll notice all of our lights have went out. Also, if you just drive the car like 10 feet, all of those lights will go out. But it's pretty scary when you do a repair with the electrical system and all of a sudden you have a million warning lights on. That will happen anytime you disconnect your battery. Now there's one more thing that we have to do and this is where leaving your windows up before disconnecting the battery comes into play. Our auto windows now don't work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the window button down all the way, let off of it at the bottom and then push it again. You'll hear the motor kind of clunk. Then we're gonna go all the way up with it, holding the button. When it gets to the top, let it go and pull it up again, like you're closing it again. That relearns the top and bottom position and now, magical one touch works again. Now, if you leave the windows up, you don't have to mess with that, but it only takes like a second and a half to actually do it. Now, if you're using VCDS instead of OBD11, the process is going to be basically the same. We're gonna go into gateway. We're gonna go into adaptation. Now, finding battery adaptation is easier in OBD11, so use the search box. It is your friend, so you don't have to scroll through a million different selections. I also went ahead and installed a new Optima in my Mark 8 to see if the adaptation was any different. If you're doing this on OBD11, it's exactly the same. But when I tested it on VCDS, I ran into an issue. Initially, my adaptation box in VCDS was grayed out, which means I couldn't do the adaptation. There's two things you need to make sure of on the Mark 8. One, 
The hood is up. Scan tool communication gets a little weird when you have the hood closed on the newest generation cars. The other thing you need to do is you need to go into program options from the main VCDS screen and highlight bypass DOIP. Once I did that and went back into gateway, my adaptation options were all right there. You do have to change them individually, but it's really, really easy. So if you run into an issue with VCDS on the newest generation stuff like Mark 8 Golf, make sure the hood's up and make sure you have bypassed the DOIP. While I swap the battery in the Mark 8, let's look at some of the questions that you probably have about replacing your vehicle battery. What happens if I replace my battery and I don't do the battery adaptation? For example, having to replace it in the case of an emergency. Well, you may have some systems in the car that won't function properly, such as start-stop system. But it's not like your car is going to explode if you don't do it. But properly replacing the battery and doing the adaptation should, should being the key word, help prolong the life of your battery. And these batteries are expensive, so we want to get as much time out of them as we can. Next, how long should my battery last? And this is a super widely varying, unanswerable question, essentially. My car is three and a half years old with about 36,000 miles on it, and I probably could have got a little bit more time out of that battery. But the thing about it is, the newer the car with the more technology in it, the more it relies on proper battery voltage. So if we end up having a weak battery, our car may still start, but it might start to do squirrely things. And like I say, with so many things, it's better to do it a little bit early than having to do it because you're broke down on the side of the road. But anywhere in that three to five year range, pretty normal on most cars. There's always going to be exceptions on both ends of that, but that's sort of the average. And if you're not sure whether you need to do it or not, just go in and double check that battery adaptation menu and see if you have that as an option. I know it stinks to feel like you have to have a scan tool for something as basic as replacing a battery but in this day and age with these generation and newer cars even going back to the generation a couple generations before this you really got to have one to be able to do a lot of different stuff and what i can tell you that's probably not going to change anytime soon as always questions or comments drop them down below with that i'm out have an awesome day and i'll talk to you again next time